Hello Potter fans, this is Jordakar, and welcome to the commentary for my Harry Potter TV intro series. In celebration of the release of the final film, Deathly Hallows Part 2, I decided I'd record a commentary discussing what have become some of my most popular videos, certainly the ones that have brought me the most subscribers. My reasons for doing these are, well, I wanted some way to sharpen my edit skills, and I liked the Harry Potter series and wanted a way to show the love. I'd seen some other editors on YouTube taking TV shows like Smallville and others and cutting movie trailers out of them, which looked like fun, and I thought, why not do the opposite, cut a movie to look like a show? So that's where these came in. The idea of turning the books into a TV show instead of movies was certainly intriguing, mainly because you can include more material in a TV show than a movie, and one of the recurring sticking points for the fandom is how much material the movies remove in order to be manageable lengths. A few of the existing TV shows I took as inspiration were Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Friends, which both show the name of the actor with several rapid shots of the main character like you see in these. Picking the music was a tricky thing. I thought about using some kind of exclusive piece of trailer music for which there's a decent selection, and I also considered using some current pop or rock song as some shows do, like on the CW. I settled on this piece, which is the prologue track, the first track from Steven Spielberg's Hook soundtrack, composed by John Williams. I decided it would fit as it was the right tone for Harry Potter, and the first three movies have similar sounding John Williams scores, so there would be a, let's call it a thematic consistency. Also the track was a convenient 90 seconds, so I wouldn't have to manipulate it to make it fit. So the Sorcerer's Stone. Working on the first intro was all about establishing a pattern that I could follow for the others. Uh, every intro has two shots of the title, one at the beginning and one at the end. The first one is always the one from the movie's trailer, and the second is always from the actual movie. Picking out all the close-ups is generally the first thing I do after I've captured all the footage. When selecting the three close-ups of the actors, it's important to find the right variety, different angles, different lighting, different costumes, etc. God, those kids used to be so tiny. You'll notice each time after Hermione's close-ups, there's a shot of the three kids all together, every single time. Also, each intro would have some kind of special appearance near the end for a particular cast member who isn't a regular, but is prominent enough in this volume to get some kind of recognition. Uh, I got the special appearance line from the intros of Gilmore Girls, where they say special appearance by Edward Herman, even though he's technically a regular. The Dursleys get to be our special guests here since they have more screen time in this movie, and I'm pretty sure more page time in the book than anywhere else in the series, and I figured we'd see them in enough episodes of the first season that it'd be fine to have them here. And many, many comments had users arguing over the title and how it's Sorcerer's Stone in America and Philosopher's Stone everywhere else and why that is and aren't we dumb in America, whatever. I used Sorcerer's because that's how it is in my Region 1 DVD and there's nothing more to it than that for me. Chamber of Secrets I was literally so juiced up from working on the first intro that I spent the next two days working on the Season 2 intro until it was done. That included capturing the footage, editing it, rendering it all, and posting it. It was pretty much all I did for two days, but it was a lot of fun. I just couldn't stop. Chamber of Secrets is the longest film, and it comes from the second shortest book. If you fold the deleted scenes back in, you've probably got about 90% of what's in the book there on screen. For people who judge the movies just on how closely they follow the books, that's lovely. But when it comes to grading the films in terms of sheer quality, Film 2 tends to rank near the bottom for a lot of people for exactly those reasons, being slavishly adapted, overly long, plotting, etc. Chamber of Secrets is still my favorite of all the intros for a few reasons. It sums up a lot of the things I wanted to do with this project, mainly with folding the deleted scenes back in. There are nine deleted scenes on display in this intro more than any other time, which is another reason I like it, because there's a sense of expansion from what they were able to put in the movie. I really got the hang of matching the action to the rhythm of the music. I'm very proud of the shot right in the middle, where Harry dodges the bludger in perfect time with the music. I'm also very proud of Tom Felton's three shots. I'm pretty sure I picked out just the right shots where he looks the most evil. Another important thing I established is that from here on, a typical shot lasts exactly one second, exactly 30 frames, which establishes the right rhythm and really speeds up the labor on my end. In between the cast, I wanted to include shots of iconic scenes from the book, as well as plot-important objects, creatures, and occasionally supporting characters. During the build-up to each movie, especially the first and the second, I remember how excited I got and everyone else got as we saw each new bit of footage, each new costume, and so forth, as the press materials were released a little at a time, and that was the main thrust here. In this alternate reality where, where the cast was assembled for TV rather than film, when you see these moments in the intro here, it would be your first time seeing them brought to life outside of the book. 
Prisoner of Azkaban. I got to work on the Season 3 intro right after finishing Season 2, but it took a bit longer to finish, mainly because of the huge stylistic shift in this movie from the first two, thanks to director Alfonso Cuaron, so I basically had to rethink my whole system for putting it together. For Season 3, I included a recurring gag in the credits where each of the shots of each of the three leads are preceded by a shot of that character's pet for this book. Hedwig for Harry, of course, Scabbers for Ron, and Crookshanks for Hermione. For one thing, Quaron doesn't use a lot of close-ups. You'll notice many of the cast shots here are medium waist-up shots, because that's just how he did the movie. I tried to incorporate the deleted scenes as before, but there were fewer of them, and a lot of the ones in the DVD had unfinished special effects. Gary Oldman is our special guest this round. The audience would know what he looks like early on, and even if you didn't read the books, you'd be waiting patiently to see him finally appear, since they spend so much time talking about him. This one includes two shots from Chamber of Secrets, one of McGonagall and one of the guys playing Quidditch, presuming that a full-length series would include all of the Quidditch matches from the book rather than just one. I had to reduce the color in each shot so they all look like they're from the same movie, the first time I ever did anything like that, ever. This is the first time I start putting clips from other movies, and I would have to resort to this because certain major characters, particularly the Hogwarts staff, appeared in the subsequent movies less and less. I could generally get away with it with the staff, but since the younger cast all noticeably age throughout the franchise, that wouldn't work as well with them. Goblet of Fire. I took a long break from editing to focus on my final year of college, and once I graduated, I got to work on the fourth intro. The recurring focus of this intro is the three champions, and I wanted to include a bit showing those actors like the one of the Dursleys in season one, including, of course, a not-yet-famous 19-year-old Robert Pattinson. And the movie was nice enough to give me just one perfect shot of the three of them standing in a row, the one you see at the end. The big surprise here, of course, is the inclusion of Stephen Fry as Ludo Bagman. Ludo was one of many characters and subplots tossed out of the movie to make it a manageable length. In the book, besides being a red herring for the villain, Bagman is basically a foil for Crouch, which is why I put the two next to each other. Their introductory chapter is called Bagman and Crouch. Stephen Fry is a very famous British actor who in fact reads the audiobooks in the UK, which sort of makes him a Potter alumnus already, and Bagman's description as a big fella with rosy cheeks and a crooked nose, well that sounded like Fry to me. The clip of Fry is from V for Vendetta, I figured he could be talking to Harry and the three broomsticks or something like that. I was disappointed with the Tom Felton clips here. Malfoy's role in the book is still big enough to include him, but I didn't have much to work with as far as usable close-ups this time, so I ended up with two clips from the same scene, and a third that's not even a close-up at all. I guess it flows okay, but it still sticks out to me. The fourth book has a huge cast, tons of new characters and subplots. I considered including cast shots for Maxim and Karkaroff, but I decided that there just wasn't room and it would weigh the whole thing down even more. I made sure to include shots of them in between, as well as shots of some of the other supporting characters wherever I could. Order of the Phoenix. The season 5 intro was the hardest of all. You have no idea. There's a lot of speeding shots up, slowing others down, pulling footage from other movies. The shot of the train is sped up. The shot of Neville finding the door is sped up, and so forth. I wanted to show the growing ranks of Dumbledore's army. So as the intro goes on, we see the usual shots of the three leads. We later add Neville. We get a glimpse of the Weasley siblings. Later we see the gang during the Ministry battle, the six of them. And at the end, the army basically consists of the entire student body. I always try to include a shot of the train, a shot of Neville, a shot of Fred and George, a shot of the Gryffindor gang hanging out, things like that. Two shots of McGonagall pulled from Chamber of Secrets. The color matched fine here, so I didn't have to adjust them at all like before. Uh, no Tom Felton in this intro. In the last movie you saw, there was a shortage of usable close-ups, and this movie has literally none, zero. I decided to just let it go here. He doesn't do much in the book, except join Umbridge's goon squad and kind of menace our heroes in the margins occasionally. And I guess there's a Quidditch match. I wanted a shot of Luna's lion head hat so bad, but we don't see it until the next movie. I decided Ginny, Neville, and Cho were all important enough to be featured, but I'd never get three shots for each of them, and there wouldn't be room, so I split the difference and made the collage that you see here. Uh, Ray Fiennes gets featured at the end here. It works since Voldemort keeps popping up in Harry's head and so forth before we actually see him, so Fiennes would have enough of an on-screen presence throughout the season, in quotes. Half-Blood Prince. In between the 5th and 6th intros, I moved to California, and so I was putting off Half-Blood Prince for a while. I finally established a deadline by trying to get it done before the first full trailer for Deathly Hallows came out, so I finally got it done in time by like a couple days. Another pattern I follow with each intro is I try to keep the order of the cast consistent, as most long-running shows do. Of course, each book has a different defense teacher, so they each occupy roughly the same spot on the sequence. And just like in Season 3 with the trio's pets, here each of them is preceded by a shot of that character's rival love interest, Romilda for Harry, Lavender for Ron, and Cormac for Hermione. 
by this point I'd more or less given up using deleted scenes. There's not a lot of flashy stuff in them, not like there used to be. A lot of them are characters just talking to each other. Aha, I know the close-up on the potions book comes right before Snape. One shot of Luna I pulled from film 5, and I tried to match the color as best I could. Not sure if I did, the look of the shot is basically green instead of blue like it was, but, it's a, but it looks okay. Getting that shot was the main reason I finished the review as late as I did, because I had to chase down a copy of Order of the Phoenix. I checked and double-checked the sixth movie, and there really weren't any other good shots of them, and it was weird. Robbie Coltrane is unfortunately missing. Hagrid only has like two scenes in the movie, but I decided that since he has such a reduced role in the book as well, that it was consistent. And it leaves room to include both Evanna Lynch and Bonnie Wright. And I decided that Bellatrix Lestrange has enough of a presence in the book and movie to get this round's special appearance tag. I want to emphasize that I don't hate the movies just because they cut things out of the books. I like that they did that. They had to do that because books and movies are different mediums and it takes real skill and discipline to tell a full complex story in a movie's runtime. I actually had trouble rewatching the first two films because they are so slow and so plotting trying to fit everything from the books, while I prefer the later ones, especially the third one, for their ability to create a good pace. In TV you can move through the story leisurely and hang out with the characters, but in movies things have to be moving all the time. I think the first two movies generally played it safe, which is fine, since they had a cash cow to worry about, but as the series went on, they made the right choice and went, okay, we need to get serious, we need to be making movies, not just filmed books. And for those wondering, I do plan on doing an intro for Deathly Hallows, though I'm still deciding exactly what it will look like. It probably won't use the hook music this time, as the format of the last book is completely different, and the only ones who were regulars are Harry and Ron and Hermione, so it wouldn't make sense to select who the other regulars and staff and the supporting cast would be because they're not really there very much until the very end. Whatever it is, you guys probably won't see that until the last movie is out on DVD because I wanted to do one big intro for Deathly Hallows rather than two separate ones. I also have a couple other projects that I'm working on, so keep your eyes peeled. At some point I'd like to re-upload all of these intros in HD, but I don't currently have the software for that, so that'll have to wait. Anyway, thank you for uh, listening to this commentary. I hope you all enjoyed it, and... Uh, and I hope to bring you guys more good stuff soon.